Conway? Is it from... Uh... Was, that was that was interesting. Yeah, cotton. These days, you, you, know, you can't go buy a light bulb and know what you're getting. Is that the engineer? Randy's off on vacation, so I, I, I have to stand in for him today. I, I haven't either. I understand it's quite flat with a lot of water. Yeah. Every day we went snorkeling. Almost a free vacation. I didn't wear a coat for two years.
somebody couldn't say anything, but you could go. I this is so hard. Well, you do, yeah. but I, it, it didn't work. Put my side here. Thank you. <laughs> but my legs go to sleep. <laughs> All right, I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Planning Commission to order. First order business will be the roll call. Chair Wilson. Present. Vice Chair Kurth. Here. Commissioner Huber. Here. Commissioner Porter. Here. Commissioner Dew. Present. Thank you. All right, will you please rise for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Kurth and Commissioner Dew. Bow your heads as we pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to meet tonight. We ask that you bless this meeting so that the best interest of this city. Thank you. Please be seated. We'll move on to the uh, approval of minutes. Um, we've got two. We've got the commission meeting, the special meeting of November 18th, 2015. I'll move to approve those minutes. Second. Oh, we need to do them individually. I was gone second. Yeah. I was gone for one. Two. I was gone on the first one. So okay, so the, the we have 18th. to do them individually. November 18th. And I have a second by Commissioner Dew. So I have a uh, motion by Vice Chair Kurth, a second by Commissioner Dew to approve the minutes of the special meeting November 18th. Aye. All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll abstain. And uh, Chair Wilson is abstaining. Right. And the next order is the uh, approval of minutes for the commission meeting of December 9th, 2015. So moved. I'll second. So I have a uh, motion by Commissioner Dew to approve those minutes, a second by Chair Wilson. 
Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain from that one. I'll abstain. Those minutes are approved with Commissioner Porter and Commissioner Huber abstaining. Uh, just a matter of housekeeping, if you wish to speak to an item before the Planning Commission this evening, if you please pull out a white card and give it to the Secretary. Um, we'll go ahead and move to agenda item number one. Thank you, Chair Wilson. Item number one is case PLN 15-00041. It is a tentative parcel map to allow for the creation of two parcels from one existing parcel with an environmental exemption. This is located at 17450 Silica Road. This is the site of the uh, previous uh, AJC glass plant. Um, the applicant is just requesting to separate the site, um, basically the main plant, uh, from the uh, accessory processing warehouse. Um, the parcel meets all the parcel map meets all Title 16 requirements. The staff recommends approval as conditioned. Thank you. I'll go ahead and open up public comment for agenda item number one. Um, I do have one card, Carl Coleman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Carl Coleman. I'm with BCA Engineering, representing the uh, client here, and uh, let you know that we accept the conditions as presented by staff, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak to agenda item number one? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close uh, public comment and bring that back to the commission. Wilson, I'd like to move to adopt Planning Commission Resolution P16 dash zero zero one uh approving the tenity parcel map and find the project categorically exempt under c4 all right who was the second second thank you do we have a motion by commissioner porter a second by commissioner huber to approve the item as conditioned all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed that project has been approved And we'll move to agenda item number two. There has been a. Commissioner Huber, I don't know if you wanted to announce your. Uh, I have a uh, probably have a conflict on this. I'm uh, a lot of the uh, fundraisers for the Elks Lodge, so I may have a potential conflict. With that, staff, uh, item number two is PLN 15-42. It's being requested by Open Door Counseling Agency at 14070 Hesperia Road in suites 104 and 105. Staff has requested a continuance due to a glitch in the noticing where the public hearing notice boundary was taken from the, the center of the suite and not from the property edges, and therefore three parcels were left off. Two of the parcels have the same owners as did receive notices however a, a third the Elks Lodge was not notified at all therefore we, they don't have any representation here today <coughs> and we re wouldn't recommend moving forward uh, with that we would recommend continuing this case to February 10th 2016 but we do recommend that that you open the public hearing and allow any testimony from people who are here on the item to be continued definitely all right, I will go ahead and open up the public comment for agenda item number two. Anyone wishing to speak? I see I got uh, Scott Smith. Hello. Hi. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. <coughs> We're with an organization called Open Door Counseling. We specialize in forensic counseling. Currently, from the last numbers we ran, there are approximately 350 individuals who register as sex offenders that are in Victorville. We are the sole contractee for the state of California and the federal government to provide outpatient counseling to these individuals. 
We don't bring them. They are already here. Um, I was told that it's very important to explain a few things because when people hear that population, there's a very negative stigma attached to it. We are not advocates for these individuals. If anything, our program leads to the arrest of many individuals that are not in compliance with the conditions of their supervision. This, these programs came about after Mr. Gardner committed some heinous crimes in San Diego. And then they followed it up by Mr. Garrido up in Antioch, who kept someone hostage in his backyard for years. Our governor, Schwarzenegger, responded to outrage in the community when the communities in San Diego confronted him when they found out these individuals were not being intensely supervised when we had an opportunity. Once they're off probation or parole, they could be standing next to you and Stater Brothers. We would never know. In the room with us now, we do have some representatives of the government. <clears throat> we do the best we can. It's a very, it's a very difficult population to work with. And, and there are times we get beat up from all sides. Uh, since this posting was in the newspaper, I've had anonymous people call me on my personal cell phone because they mistakenly think we're advocates for, for sex offenders or we're bringing sex offenders to Victorville. We currently operate locations in multiple cities. We're all over the place. There are so many people that have been let out of jail. The least we can do is try to intensely supervise individuals that are capable of committing heinous offenses. Currently, we have locations in Baldwin Park, San Fernando Valley, uh, Antelope Valley, uh, we're in the Inland Empire, we're in Pomona, we're everywhere because this is where these guys are settling when they get out of prison. It, it, it has already happened. To have 350 of these guys that are in this city already and there is no provider of services in this city. Uh, someone from the Planning Commission already went to verify a couple addresses of supposed providers. They had cobwebs on their door and there were dust on the handles because we're pretty straightforward. And the reason why these other agencies haven't stood before you is because they kind of slipped in the city without doing it the right way. We're very transparent. We have uh, nearly zero recidivism rate. I wish I could tell you why these guys don't reoffend when they're in the program. The containment model, and it's on the public website through CASEM, the governor's board, the California Sex Offender Management Board, it has three components. Supervision from law enforcement, which is the parole agent or the probation officer, a therapist, and mandatory polygraphs. We have had clients admit to unknown cases. We have had clients admit to behaviors that were unknown to their supervision deputy because they cracked during the polygraph. All of our polygraphers are either retired or active duty law enforcement, and that's part of the law. If they refuse to be polygraphed, they are at risk of going to jail, just on that alone. Uh, we were delayed in opening an office in the Antelope Valley. And in the 12 months that it took us to open the office in Antelope Valley, there were three incidents of creepy old guys trying to pull little girls in their car on the way to school. And that's when we got a phone call from Sacramento to reprimand us for not being open in the Antelope Valley. And since we've been open in the Antelope Valley, we have zero recidivism. Zero clients have reoffended. I wish this would go on after they're off of probation or parole. I wish there was a way to extend probation or parole when we discover someone is fixated or dangerous. <laughs> but all we can do is gather as much information as we can and we share it with local law enforcement. And to think before Governor Schwarzenegger pushed this law through, this component didn't exist. You have 350 of these guys in your community already, and there are zero counseling agencies to pull them in to find out how they did what they did. Do they recognize what they did? Are they feeling that way right now? Let's get your agent on the phone. You know, if you're going to blame it on drugs and you're using drugs, I'm scared of you. 
If you're a guy that says, I was drunk when I did it, and you're still drinking, I'm terrified of you. And what I explained to one of our planning commission, oh, yeah. I am just gonna, you <clears throat> mentioned three things that are required to do, that's supervision of law enforcement, a therapist, and polygraph? Yeah, it's the containment model, the three legs of the stool. We don't have an agency doing that right now, then they're just going to their supervision of law enforcement, they're not seeing a therapist? And they're not being polygraphed. By the therapist and the polygraph? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted yeah, to- And we have some great agents. We have some great probation officers. Most of these guys have GPS monitoring. It just shows you where the guy was, right? It doesn't show you what the guy is doing. And some of these guys have fixations. They're in Stater Brothers with you right now. You know, uh, uh, it, the guy may look like someone in the room right now. <clears throat> we get them in and we just get them to start talking about it. <clears throat> and then they'll start to disclose beliefs that are not consistent with what we agree to as a society. And we start working on it. And we make sure law enforcement is aware. A, a, a law enforcement officer may have 30 people on his caseload or 50. What we can do is say, you know those other 29? Okay, but this guy, you need to know where he is tonight because of what he disclosed in group today. Okay, I don't know about the other 29, but we know this guy is dangerous. Those other 29 may never get a traffic ticket again. Um, currently, our parole unit is directly across the street from Kaiser Hospital. Our preference would be to be across the street from the parole unit. Uh, across the street from where we're meeting, there's domestic violence programs. A lot of our clients are those guys. Our clients report to the parole unit every day of the week. We present locations. We were told that we needed to find a location C1. We found location C1 that we wouldn't accept because there's certain places I don't wanna be. I don't wanna be in a building with a shared bathroom with my neighbor. Maybe I have a transient client that's doing a bird bath or maybe somebody has a bathroom fetish. Mm. I'd prefer to be in a standalone building with its own bathroom next to a big field. I've given all of our addresses to our representatives from planning. They've Googled our addresses and they know I'm telling the truth. We prefer mixed use industrial. I don't wanna be next door to a nail salon. I don't wanna give these guys an opportunity to be jerks with the people that live in our community, but they live in the community. Of the locations we provided to uh, planning, one was perfectly appropriate, zoned appropriate, huge parking lot, but that's not where we would prefer to be. There's a beauty salon, there's, you know, there's just other businesses there. The location we submitted is next door to a vacant giant field. And our preference would be to be in the Civic Center area, preferably across from parole or as close to the police department as we possibly can because we don't have security and, and our therapists look like the people in this room. Uh, sometimes we give these guys news they don't want to hear and they get mad at us. And our only recourse is to pick up the phone and call for help, right? Um, but I appreciate the time that you've allowed me to share uh, I was going to speak about this is just an issue are we zoned appropriately or not and I was told I was reprimanded by Mrs. Smith and, and uh, my other representatives over here that I needed to take time to explain how this came about and if anybody has Google Google Mr. Gardner and Google Mr. Garrido and when Schwarzenegger went to San Diego the community was outraged when they found out the level of supervision that one of these guys actually has. And we're doing the best we can. Our polygraphers have had these guys disclose incredible information. And they, they disclose it openly in the group. And it's scary. And maybe seven out of 10 or eight out of 10 will never commit another crime. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the guy that is a risk to my kids, okay? And uh, I, I just don't want to come up and get beat up. You know, we spent thousands of dollars in this process. Um, and I'm try trying to show the federal probation officers and the California state parole agents that we're doing our due diligence and we're trying to open up to Victorville. And if we're denied, I would just ask that you give us guidance. We will open up in any location 
anything the side of a double wide, in any field, as long as it's walking distance to a bus stop, we have a number of individuals who do not attend and their valid excuse is, I couldn't make it because I didn't have transportation. I couldn't make it because it's too far. If I come and I get back, it's going to be dark and my parole agent doesn't want, want me walking through the streets after dark, but the bus only runs every hour on the week. Whatever the excuse is, they're all valid and there'll be excused absences, but if we're a block from the parole unit, if you can report to parole, you can report to us. So we're trying, we'll, we'll go in any location you want. We, we don't want to go into places we found that were C1 because most of them are in strip malls that are filled. We found a strip mall that's vacant. I believe the tenants in that building are um, they're bill collectors. That's why the parking lot's always empty. It's people that call and collect bills over the phone. There are no, it's not retail. We don't have to worry about that. If anybody has any questions. Well, a question I had, the facility in Apple Valley, is that going to remain open or? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's not a good spot right now. It's not a good spot just because there's some issues, but it was a temporary spot because we thought this process would move quickly. You know, there's some basic issues. Like it needs a roof and. Well, thank you for all the information. I mean, I, I read, uh, your the write-up that you did with uh, correspondence back and forth with Alex and very informative and we don't want to be known as the sex offender people no and that's initially because I saw the article in the paper and uh, and having read everything it was kind of disheartening that it really wasn't quite a, a good perspective of what you guys are actually trying to do um, you do realize that we we are going to request a continuance yeah. for the item for until next month uh, to give proper noticing for, uh, I believe it's the Elks Club and then anyone else that might have been missed. So, but any questions? And would you uh, please indulge me? I'd like to ask a clarification. I believe in your testimony today, uh, it's my impression that you gave me the impression that the state of California uh, only has you performing this task. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I find that amazing, if, if not alarming. And we have no there's no county agency that can form the same task that you do or no, fulfill sir, that responsibility? We're, we're very good at what we do. So you have uh, carte blanche, uh, total autonomy in the state of California to do what you do? Not in the entire state. How so? The state is split into regions. I recognize that. Okay, so we have the San Fernando Valley. We have the Antelope Valley. We have San Bernardino, that includes the high desert and the low desert. We also have an office in Pomona, which old people like me would call the Pomona Valley. And we still have an existing office in the San Gabriel Valley, which is Baldwin Park. You don't get very much larger than us. Um, there may be one company in the state of California that has more locations and serves more clients. We are good at what we do. We have uh, clients and an office in Bakersfield? No. Northern California? No, we're not up there yet. So your concentration is primarily Southern California? And we're not as far as San Diego yet. And again, there's no other agency that can form either countywide or statewide what you're doing? No, actually, I got a phone call today from Melissa Leon, who is the coordinator for the LA County Probation Department trying to place one of their clients because apparently he got kicked out of another agency in Kern County. There's, this is a very niche uh, uh, field of study. If you go to the CASEM website, you'll see there's a long process to even be certified as a therapist to work with these individuals. This is not your normal counseling. They're a very, very challenging population. Um, it can, it can be very, very challenging. Some of these guys are nice, they're like your uncle. And some of these guys are just very, very hardcore individuals and we try our best. And we're very good at it. And our recidivism rate is above reproach. Well, I, I thank you for your testimony today and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Oh, and I believe I provided our actual contract to you in that huge package you have. I actually provided the paperwork from the state of California and from the federal government 
that identifies us as the sole contractors for this region. Thank you. Question? Um, I thank you for the detailed information, and this is projected to be, you know, continued, uh, unfortunately, um, for the fairness of a, a property owner nearby. Um, and you've answered a lot of the questions. Um, I don't think we need to go into this tonight, but just I would like to prepare because on the next public hearing when everyone will be here, um, you know, others and myself will probably ask um, one of the biggest potential um, hypothetical challenges in this use from neighbors and possibly even myself yeah. is how is this use here and also your other locations? How would that, how does that possibly negatively affect close lying neighbors? retail office shopping center across the street um, maybe you could give us a little more detail next time on historical items in those cases and challenges that you may have or may not have had on your other locations because i think that's what a lot of the public might be concerned and that's about fair. thank you all right motion to continue or just Is there anyone else going to wishing to speak to agenda item number two? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Oh wait, leave public comment open and continue. Make a recommendation to continue to our February 9th, 2016 meeting. February 10th, sorry. Is that the recommendation? I'll second it. Thank you. We have a, a motion by Chair Wilson to continue this item to the February, February 10th. 10th meeting of the Planning Commission. <laughs> and um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So that has been continued with Commissioner Huber um, absent. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to agenda item number three. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Agenda item number three is uh, case number PLN 15-00020. It's a tentative parcel map and a site plan to allow for uh, the phased development of a two uh, tenant uh, commercial uh, complex located on the east side of Industrial Boulevard, just north of Bear Valley. This proposal consists of um, approximately 27,000 square feet of, of area in two phases. The first phase would be approximately 15,000 square feet. The second phase would be approximately 12,000 square feet. Uh, the first phase would be the rear building of the site. Um, along with this first phase, all uh, landscaping improvements would be done and street improvements along Industrial Boulevard um, and the alleyway. This proposal, um, meets all requirements of Title 16, including parking, aesthetics, uh, design guidelines, et cetera. Additionally, uh, this proposal was continued from the previous uh, Planning Commission hearing, hearing in December. There were some concerns with uh, condition number 20 of the site plan in respects to uh, a requirement to pave it. Um, after discussing the, the proposal and the, and the condition with the applicant, um, there's a compromise made between staff and the applicant to uh, revise condition number 20, um, as noted in the continuance memo, which would include um, rather than pavement uh, because of concerns with the easement area that is there and, and the, the applicant's uh, desire to retain that easement, or, or I'm, I'm, not so, I'm sorry, uh, not retain it, but uh, hopefully get that vacated in the future from one of the neighboring property owners that by paving it, it would uh, reduce those efforts. So the compromise was to uh, do three to six inch cobblestone compacted with the rolled curb that would allow the easement area to remain, would allow trucks to access it, but would also alleviate any uh, maintenance concerns staff had raised previously. Additionally, as proposed in this Exhibit A in the continuance memo, um, it would not uh, require a deviation from Title 16. It would meet all requirements of 16. Uh, therefore, as proposed with the revised condition number 20, uh, staff uh, recommends approval of the proposal. Thank you. I'll go ahead and open up public comment for agenda item number three. Anyone wishing to speak to agenda item number three? Good evening. Uh, thank you for taking the time to hear the case. Uh, my name is Richard Gottlieb. I'm the uh, owner of the property, and uh, we were here in front of you last month, and uh, 
Uh, I also have the architect here again to answer any more detailed questions you want. Um, I realize a couple of you weren't here, so uh, if you want me to re-go through anything or have the architect go anything, through anything, we can. Um, but the last kind of remaining item is pretty straightforward, and I think we came up with a solution that allows trucks to still drive over it, but also kind of delineates it from the, rep, from the normal part of the highway. Um, so, you know, we think it's a really tight plan. We heard what the Planning Commission had to say last month, and, you know, we kind of tightened it up, and I think we got it. If you have any questions, let me know, or I can have the architect speak to it, too. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, if you have any questions, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak to agenda item number three? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Chairman, I'd like to uh, go ahead and um, find the site plan portion of the project exempt from CEQA. Um, adopt resolution P-15-0. 3-5, approving the uh, case number of PLN 15-00020, um, subject to the attached conditions of approval, including the revised language for condition number 20, as noted in the staff report, and adopt resolution P-15-036, approving the uh, tentative parcel map for PLN 15-00020, subject to all of the conditions attached in the staff report. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chair Kurth, a second by Commissioner Dew, to uh, approve this item with the revi revisions to uh, condition number 20. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That project has been approved. And uh, agenda item number four. Thank you, Chairman Wilson. Item number four is case PLN 15-00025. It is a general plan amendment from public institutional to high density residential to low density residential and a zone change and from public civic to high density residential to single family residential with a negative declaration. This is located on 30 acres west of Urbina Road, east of an abutting Monta Vista Road, north of an abutting Nyack Road and south of La Mesa Road. Essentially, the 30-acre site was originally zoned for R1. Um, during our general plan amendment update in 2008, uh, the site was um, well, 20 acres of that site was rezoned to public civic, um, and a small portion of two and a half acres was rezoned to high-density residential. Uh, the civic portion was an attempt to assist uh, Snowline School District with uh, siting some school sites. However, those haven't materialized. Um, the applicant still wishes to retain the original R1 zoning and not be limited by um, the PC zoning restrictions that doesn't allow single family development. Um, staff has reviewed the proposal and uh, recommends that uh, you send a favorable recommendation to the City Council to approve this amendment. We're available if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and open up public comment for agenda item number four. Uh, anyone wishing to speak to agenda item number four? <laughs> Pack house. You, ra you ran everybody out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Ed Bondeman with Joseph E. Bondeman Associates. I re represent the uh, owner. I'm here for questions if you have any. Questions? Oh, okay. 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 Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to close public comment if you have something to say. No, I'll hang. I I don't. Thank you, though. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I'll go ahead and close public comment. Go back to the commission. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make the recommendation to City Council to the adoption of the attached negative declaration pursuant to sections 15074 of the CEQA Act and adopt resolution P-15-048 recommending City Council approve the general plan amendment portion of case PLN 15 
and adopt a resolution P15-040 recommending City Council approve approval of the zone change portion of case PLN 15-00025. I'll second that. We have a motion by commission by Chair Wilson, a second by Commissioner Porter, recommending um, this item to be uh, approved by the City Council. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So that will be um, scheduled for City Council hearing. Um, as discussed with planning staff, we're going to attempt to send that to the February 2nd City Council meeting. Thank you. And agenda item. This is not official, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, agenda item number five. This proposal is a, uh, is our climate action plan proposal. It's uh, recommending uh, that you continue the item for two months to our March 9th hearing. Um, we're still working with the building industry. Uh, we still need to prepare a uh, screening table that uh, goes over the implementation of the program. So we should have that available in March for the hearing and uh, should be at that point able to move forward to city council. Okay. Do I need to open public comment or just request to continue? Better open it. In one yeah. one motion. Yeah. Uh, open up public comment for anyone that wishes to speak to agenda <laughs> item number five. Oh, wait, this is not. Uh, then do we leave public comment open and then continue again? All right. So I make a motion to continue this item to our March 9th, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. Second. So we have a first um, by um, Chair Wilson, a second by Vice Chair Kurth to continue this item to the March 9th uh, regular meeting of the Planning Commission. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That will be continued to March 9th. Uh, in compliance with the Brown Act, it is necessary for the Planning Commission to make available time for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that fall within the Planning Commission Commission's subject matter jurisdiction. Uh, please limit the length of your comments to three minutes. Is there anyone that wishes to address the Planning Commission? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. And agenda item number six. It's just information purposes only from the school district, Hesperia School District. Any questions or comments in regards to agenda number six? I, I have a question. I believe somewhere in the communication there was an indication that <coughs> if there was a question or concerns that um, there's an invitation to um, go to Hispera Unified, well, yes, yeah, uni Hispera Unified School District to discuss that. Is that correct? It's, it's in the communication here somewhere. I should have. Yeah, there is yes. a meeting. It states the date of the meeting, Chris, the public hearing that Hesperia School District is going to have regarding this item. So we made sure it was on this agenda because it's the last couple weeks of January, something like that. So my question was if there is a question, that is that an audience with them? Is that with staff only or commissioner and staff or I don't know. We've never had that, ever met with them uh, other than just in prep preparing for school facilities in the future. So if uh, we, I'm sure we could arrange a meeting with commissioner and staff. I, I don't have anything at this time I'm gonna check with someone and then um, information and then I'll, I'll get back with you in short order. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, and then a presentation of reports by uh, commission members. Commissioner Porter. Uh, the only thing that I would like us to consider doing is uh, the possibility of looking into um, 
making uh, parking lots uh, have mandatory sweeping. That we used to do it, it used to be in the municipal code some time ago, and it made a big difference on the amount of rubbish and trash that was blowing all over the place. And uh, you know, some of the parking lots that you see now are, they're really pretty, pretty grubby. Now, I don't know whether it's still in the municipal code, I didn't check that out, but I, I think that we should have something that has them doing that. At what they do, they do it. They hire somebody to do it after a certain hour and in and, um, and the early morning hours, I guess. And then they, and, and it really cuts down on the debris that's that's all over our, all over the uh, desert. Anyway, just for a thought for everybody. We're, we're looking at beautifying the city and. I don't think trash has ever beautified it. <laughs> My comment is I hope we have more than two items the rest of our year this year. So. I agree. Uh, <laughs> I Commissioner think I can Dew? arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Dew? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, like my uh, colleagues, I would like to say that we're looking forward to a positive uh, year for 2016. And um, I'm delighted to be here. And as Mrs. Porter indicated, um, we should, we are using two tracks. One is to a state of correction and then a uh, state of uh, prosperity. And I, I would like to think that the state of California doesn't invest all of its, um, what I say, the challenges in one uh, entity. That is, uh, it seems that we should have more. If there's an outcry for certain services, then I think if there is a demand, I think it requires more agencies or more entities. And the fact that the government itself is not involved, uh, that amazes me. Yes, Commissioner Kirk. Speaking of going into 2016, it just reminded me, um, what's, the, what's the city's feeling on the development department um, for two, going into 2016 throughout the year with um, projected development? We know we saw some spark a little bit last year with some, some retail. What, do, what are we feeling and gearing up for within the city as far as not just residential but commercial? Um, industrial projects. Are we, is the plate going to get a little heavier this year? Do we think? Scott, take that because he's just he's just in, in general. All of our pre, just in general. Uh, yeah, pre in general, we are seeing more activity uh, on residential, uh, more tracks gearing up to come back, um, or to re-entitle their their prior um, tentative track maps. Uh, we're also seeing more medical. Um, some of the projects that are finishing construction now are medical. Um, and we just recently received a, um, in total, it's about 100,000 square feet of medical south of uh, the St. Mary's campus. Um, so that, that you'll see in a couple months. Um, so we are seeing um, some traction. I'm hoping that this year we'll, we'll, we will see more um, just based on the economy than uh, 2015. Haven't you been told too that Part of the medical might go smaller scale because of the way Obamacare is working and the need for um, different types of specialized. Uh, there is there is some notion that office doesn't need that much space, um, that the companies are consolidating. Um, my understanding is that the Victor Valley is underserved in that category, so we we will likely see more. In terms of just expanding a little bit on not just development, but in terms of the development department, what our goals are for 2016, I don't know if you're aware, but um, we use the Tidemark permitting system. It's probably about 15 years old, if not older. Uh, we're updating that to a new program, which uh, will allow applicants, contractors, residents to be able to apply for things through the development department online. Um, and they track the progress of it online as, yep, as it goes exactly. through the department? You'll, you'll have an account with a password. They can log in and see all their stuff that they've got going. Um, we're hoping to have that done by the end of the year and, and 
starting to implement it by the end of the year. That off in February, and then we are our other main priority is to be better customer service and business friendly. Uh, working on aspects of our website as well as training and outreach. Mr. Chairman, may I uh, amend my uh, comments? That is, that I forgot to commend the code enforcement and the sheriff department. It was brought to my attention that code enforcement and the sheriff department um, alleviated or eliminated someone who was operating a marijuana dispensary in the city of Victorville, and uh, there was swift and swift action taken, and uh, that's to the credit of the code department and the sheriff department for San Bernardino County. I have nothing, and I am also optimistic and looking forward to an awesome 2016. We'll uh, call this a day and, oh, sorry. Oh, hi. Were you here for an item? Are you Mrs. Diaz? She just wants to know what happened on the uh, item two. Uh, item, no, item number two was the open door counseling agency. Uh, and it was continued to February 10th because of a noticing issue that was uh, the applicant provided labels that didn't include all of the properties that needed to be noticed. Uh, the Elks Lodge across the street diagonal was not noticed and therefore we need to send out notices to three property owners and Therefore, we're continuing to February 10th. Correct. Yes. At 5 o'clock. And also, um, Chris, isn't it, are, are these uh, planning commission meetings recorded on the um, website, the audio, or just the audio? So if you were to hear, if you were here to uh, learn about that item, um, it should be up in a day or so. You can go to the City of Victorville website, and you'll be able to hear the audio testimony that happened tonight just for your own reference and preparation. Five o'clock. <laughs> That's me. I, there must have been a misunderstanding, and I apologize if there was, but it's it, they're always at five o'clock. So I apologize, but, but the item has been continued, as, as Chris noted, so there will be an opportunity to present testimony at that February 10th meeting as well. Margaret, if you could uh, stay back. Margaret, I I'd like to speak with you. If you could stay back for a few moments. If you could stay back for a few moments, I'd like to speak with you. All right. We're going to close our, our uh, meeting out this evening and so our uh, February 10th, 2016. Go. So? Going to uh, adjourn to the special workshop um, be taking place on January 27th. Thank you.